Good morning, everybody. Um, today, uh, for our first session, we have Genevieve Bell, who is the uh, interim dean for the College of Engineering and Computer Science, um, the head of the School of Cybernetics, uh, and has an Order of Australia. She's um, a very impressive woman, and she'll be talking about reimagining uh, computer science and engineering at the ANU. That's true, I will. Fantastic. Th thank you kindly. Go for it. Excellent. <laughs> All right. I, yeah. You were very kind. I'm aware that in classic ANU fashion, we we're already running 15 minutes late, and this is the first session of the day. For those of you who are parents here, I want to assure you this is not actually how we run our classrooms, but it is how we run everything else. <laughs> so I am indeed uh, Genevieve Bell. I am also a distinguished professor in the College of Engineering, Computing and Cybernetics. New name coming to you soon, Tony. See? Got it in there. Yay. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about why engineering, computing and cybernetics might be in your future or in the future of your children. So. Before I get going, one quick question. Can I have everyone in the room who is parenting a child in this room put up their hands? Excellent. And anyone who is being parented, hands up? Okay, good. 50-50 split. Useful to know. All right. So, this talk has a little bit for both of you because it is hugely important as far as I am concerned to have two people in this conversation. For those of you who were here before, you heard Brian reflect on the fact that decisions about where you go to university are complicated decisions. They're decisions about where you see yourself now, about where you're going, about who you might want to be. Much like Brian, my own journey to this moment here being the inexplicable interim director of the College of Engineering, Computing and Cybernetics started in Canberra. I'm a Canberra kid. I grew up in O'Connor, Turner Primary, Lynham High School, Dixon College, Stanford, Intel, ANU. So I spent 30 years overseas. I'm actually an anthropologist which makes me a very strange person to be running a college of engineering, computing, and cybernetics, but should tell any parent in the room that there are multiple pathways through and multiple places that you can go and multiple places that might be your starting points. And we have a very particular starting point here. We're on the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people here in Canberra, Australia, and I want to pay my respects to elders past and present and to acknowledge that we're on land that was always sacred and never ceded and to reflect that as I get to talk about the future of technology almost every day. I get to do it in a place where people have been talking about building and keeping technical systems for 65,000 years. We often talk about that and we don't always make it as concrete as I like to in my classrooms. So if we were in one of my classrooms, I would start by saying about 800 kilometres north of here on the New South Wales-Queensland border in the town of Bawarana, there is a set of fish traps. Those fish traps are estimated to be 20,000 years old. They were architected by a man named Bayami. He is one of the important cultural heroes of most of the indigenous people in New South Wales. He created many things, but one of the things he created were those fish weirs. And they are an extraordinarily complex technical and social system. They require knowledge of lithics, so stone. They require knowledge of ichthyology, the study of fish. They require knowledge of hydrology, study of water. They also require a complex understanding of how humans use technical systems. Because those fish weirs, which extend a whole kilometre up the Barwon River, shaped like little U's, have been collecting fish and holding them in clear running water to feed people at high season for 20,000 years. Which means they have been maintained through two deglaciations and reglaciations. They've been maintained through changes of population. They have been maintained and used by multiple nations who gathered on the banks of the Barwon River over multiple generation on generation on generation. And were the river not in flood, I could reasonably assure you that the last time those fish weirs were being used was, would have been last weekend. But at the moment, it's probably the last time the river was slightly lower than it finds itself now. Why would we start by talking about Biomi and talking about that complex technical system? Well, part of the reason we start by talking about it in our college is because we want to be building systems that matter, systems that scale and systems that last. And we get to do it in a place where people have been building those kind of systems for 20,000 years, which is extraordinary. Engineering has a really long history in this place, as do complex systems and complex ideas. And in our college, those are all the things we like to talk about. And we like to talk about them in all kinds of different sorts of ways. And maybe if I push the clicker, something will happen. Whee, there we go. 
So I want to tell you three things in three categories, and again, both to parents and to prospective students. Two different narrative threads running through here first. So first I want to talk to you about a little bit about your learning journey and about why that's important. If you were in the room a little while ago, Brian told you all kinds of remarkable things about the university. Delightfully, he neglected to tell you possibly the most important thing about this university. We are ranked number one in Australia. So, for some people, that will be a deciding factor for coming here. For others of you, you would reasonably ask, what does that actually mean? What does it mean to be ranked number one in Australia? And what does it mean that our computing and engineering faculties are ranked in the top in the world? Well, it means we have extraordinary faculty, it means we do extraordinary work, and it means a whole lot of that work is innovative, some of it is rule-breaking, some of it takes decades to bear fruit, and some of it is in market already. Our graduates go on to have a range of different jobs, both in universities and well beyond them. They have jobs in Australia in the public service, they have jobs in industry, some of them go overseas, some of them go on to higher education. There are a myriad of pathways in and out. But the thing you need to understand is that being part of a world-class university and a university that's ranked number one in Australia means that we get to attract the best and the brightest from overseas as well. It means that people like me, when Brian Schmidt called me five years ago and said, you have to come home, which was an odd request because I was sitting in the middle of Silicon Valley running a strategy organization for the world's largest semiconductor manufacturing company. The request to come home to Australia was to come home to a place that was doing remarkable work and a place that was genuinely special and a place that got to be special because it has for 75 years produced extraordinary thinkers and extraordinary doers. So people who have changed the face of Australian society and indeed the global world. So, for those of you who care about rankings, it's number one. And I will admit, when I went to my undergraduate degree, which was also in America, I didn't understand about rankings. By the time I went to my PhD, I did. And it helped that Stanford wasn't a bad university. What that also means is that the reputation that attaches to your person you are parenting <laughs> and to the conversations you have is of a university that's world class and a university that's doing remarkable and interesting things. Our graduates go into all kinds of places and I wanted to tell you just about one of them. This is Ruth. Ruth and I have been uh, working on and off together for at least two years. Uh, Ruth is one of the people who had a double degree, like Brian talked about. She has a degree sitting inside both the College of Engineering and Computer Science and inside the Arts College where she worked in philosophy. Ruth spent time in her degree program overseas, working as an engineer, looking at how to do engineering in Nepal and how to build systems there. She built robots, she tutored in classes, and as of, well, two days ago, Ruth is at Berkeley. Uh, she texted me last night to say she likes Berkeley, but the coffee is really not very good. So, University of California, Berkeley, if that's not too much of a kind of a shorthand for you, she's in San Francisco, California which I can tell you does not have good coffee. So your degree will get you places that may not have good coffee. If we are well, we will teach you how to find it. But for Ruth, having a degree and having spent time in the College of Engineering and Computer Science was about spending a, a degree in a place where there were multiple kinds of conversations, where there were opportunities for her to have hands-on learning, not just technical learning, and an opportunity to work with people who came from a myriad of different kinds of backgrounds, and to be in classrooms with faculty and other students who were similarly diverse. Now, you can hear me tell you all about that, but I thought it might be interesting to also have some of our faculty talk about that. We have faculty who come from all over the world. We have faculty who come from all over the disciplinary map. So what that means is in my school, the School of Cybernetics, I have people who have backgrounds in physics, in computer science, in civil engineering, but also in photography, art, anthropology, law, and public policy. For my colleague, Tony Hoskins. Tony, you can stand up for a second. You can usually find Tony, he's very tall. This is Tony, he's the director of the School of Computing. Were we to ask Tony to recite the range of faculty he has in his school and where they come from, they would be similarly diverse. He has people who have backgrounds in mathematics, in computer science, in linguistics, in philosophy, in biology, in informatics, in physics. I say, I think there's at least one of those. 
do, there we go. And they come from all kinds of different places. So between the two of us, we have faculty from North America, from Europe, from Asia and our region, from Australia. We have people who came from universities before they came here, who came from government, who came from the Australian Signals Directorate, who came from Google and Microsoft. So we have people who've come from all over the place and who bring all of those experiences into our classrooms and into our learning experiences. And I wanted to just pivot to a quick video to have a few of those faculty talking about what they're doing in those classrooms. I've always been someone interested in teaching because there's this human aspect, something I missed a lot was, was in the industry. So, you know, this kind of eureka moment, like, oh, I got it, this is cool, this is interesting, it's something that always interested me. And I think like, you know, knowledge is a sort of magical glasses, something that lets you see the world differently. When they get something for the first time, it's, it's a really exciting feeling, particularly if it's something that you've kind of worked at over a period of time with them, just to have that kind of moment where it clicks. Young people require only 12 weeks to have a complete transformation in their identity, to see them transform from someone who's not sure what they're going to do, being unsure in a class, having some struggles, understanding what's expected of them, meeting the challenges and then feeling like, yes, I am a computer scientist now. A lot of the work that I do in a teaching sense is around work integrated learning and helping students transition from what they've learned academically and put that into practice in industry linked projects and industry based placements. And the thing that's really exciting for me at the moment is I've got an opportunity to create a brand new course at ANU that we're going to run next year, which is game development. And I know that there's a lot of students already that are very keen to, to study games development and it's a really exciting way to teach them about programming and computer science. So what you should get from that is a range of different faculty who have different backgrounds and who are offering really different kinds of courses. And that's actually really important in terms of how we think about our students here and how we think about what's going on. So for us, this is very much about a range of different classroom experiences. So if that's the sort of the learning journey, the people that you'll be with and the projects that you'll do are equally diverse. Uh, you will have noticed, I think, over the last two days that we had a job summit here in Canberra where our political classes and members of government and industry and other groups gathered to talk about what the future of work should look like in Australia and how we would think about the next generation of skills. We've been thinking about those questions inside the college for a long time too. Not only do we think it's hugely important that people have foundational knowledge, the kind of knowledge that will take you through your whole life, we also believe you should have a set of skills that will equip you with the first things you do when you leave. So that means our classrooms have all kinds of attributes to them. We tend to have project-based learning so that you learn with your peers, not just your individual experience, but the one you get to have with other people. Because when you leave here, chances are you won't just be working by yourself, you'll be working with other people. And learning to how to have a work experience that includes other people and other perspectives and other ways of doing things is part of where we actually start all of the work we do inside our college. That also means we have a whole series of other projects that we have and a whole series of other ways of encouraging and accelerating that. We have a tech launcher project that again sits mostly inside this, well, sits across the whole college at this point, that ensures that students have an opportunity to build actual products and put them out into the world. We have industry sitting in many of our schools working with us. We have them co-located. In my school, we have an entire project designed where we invite industry to come and co-partner with us as we build things and have them actually taken back into the companies where they go. That notion of work integrated learning is a really big part of how we think about the work that we do and how we think about the kind of educational experiences we want to provide you with. Now, if that isn't your cup of tea, I promise there are other ways you get to learn as well. Not everyone wants to have those kind of experiences, so we try to make a rich range of things. It also means we have all kinds of student-driven activities. So we have student groups. There are a number of them you will find if you go out onto Canberra Avenue, so out that building and up that corridor, or if you go to the big building behind us on the fifth floor, you will find a range of our student organisations, whether it's the Solar, Clark, Solar Car Club, try saying that one quickly, <laughs> or our RoboGal group. We have multiple groups that students have started in order to find things they want to do, including things around creativity and music and art, 
lots of different ways of thinking about it. Now, I know when I turned up at Intel 25 years ago, I was told that engineers were shy people. I always thought that was a gross generalization because I've met a lot of engineers that were really gregarious. And I think one of the interesting pieces of the puzzle is that we actually have a group of people sitting inside our college who are radically diverse in terms of where they grew up, in terms of what they did before they got here, in terms of where they want to go, in terms of the journey that they're on about working out who they're going to be. And it's hugely important to us that we support all of that and make all of that part of your rich experience of being with us. And we get to do all of that. I'm going to just pass through there. Oh, so sad. Because I promised I'd finish on time. In an amazing place. So like I said, if you go out those doors and down that avenue, for those of you who are going to come to the ANU, and I can tell that is the case, you will find the engineering, computing, and cybernetic precinct. It's over there. We have a range of amazing buildings. We have a range of remarkable spaces. We have a range of innovative labs and innovative teaching facilities. We have a maker space. It's one of three on campus. It's open 24 hours a day. It has everything from 3D printers to sewing machines. I can't seem to convince anyone we should have an arc welder, but it's just time before we get that. I want an arc welder. Not everyone else does. I grant you that. Uh, those building spaces are incredibly, uh, well, they're beautiful. We've just opened our most recent space, the Birch Building, which is sort of through that way. Uh, it has won a series of architectural awards for its rehabilitation of a 1950s brutalist Canberra architecture. Those of you who are Canberra people, who are the parenting group, you'll remember what those buildings look like. They have a lot of pebble creep on them. Uh, this one is now kind of lovely on the inside. We've created a new set of classroom spaces. My school sits on the third floor. Engineering takes over the entire ground floor for teaching. It's an opportunity for, again, a very different set of engaged classrooms and engaged spaces. So that's a big, very quick run through a very complicated college and a very complicated set of possibilities for all of you. And I know sitting here listening to all of this, it's hard to know is that going to be you or isn't it? Here, I think, is the invitation from all of us who are in the faculty and in the staff of the College of Engineering, Computing and Cybernetics. We would love to have you here. We think this is a place that has an extraordinary set of learning opportunities to offer. Flipped classrooms, engaged learning, work integrated learning. We think it is an extraordinarily rich collection of people who come from different places around the world, who are on different trajectories, and who will go to different places. I guess this is the piece of the puzzle where I pause and say, those of you parenting someone in the room, I am here to assure you that having a degree in these kind of fields, in computing, in engineering, in cybernetics, are being trained in thinking about systems, these are precisely the kind of things that will be intensely valuable when your children leave this place. Uh, when I wasn't a professor, I was running very large groups inside a very large American multinational company. And I know what I looked for when I looked for employees. I wanted people who were well trained in their fields, but I also wanted people who knew how to think at a systems level. I wanted people who knew how to do teamwork and collaboration. And I wanted people who were passionate about where they were going and what they were doing. And our commitment is that we will help your children find themselves on that journey. And children, we will help you be those people. And coming here is part of all of those pieces of the puzzle. And you get to do it in this extraordinary place in the country's only national university, in a university that is ranked number one, and in a university that will stay all of those amazing things because you'll be here. So the invitation from my colleagues in the college is that we hope we'll see you here in February next year, which I know if you are 18 years old feels like a lifetime away. If you are those of us contemplating starting next semester, it is panic central right now. So with that, I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to invite you to all the places you can find my colleagues and the amazing people in our college. Mari Ray Building, down the avenue. Follow the big flags that say the College of Engineering and Computer Science. And with that, I'm going to stop and say thank you. Um, well, thank you to Genevieve. That was uh, incredible. As a... Uh, um, computer science student myself, she's only scratched the surface of the amazing opportunities on campus. Um, I remember one thing that I was able to do um, at the end of my first year 
is actually have a go on the supercomputer on campus. I doubt you'll find any other university um, where you get to touch uh, the largest supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere um, in your first year. But that's the kind of opportunities and the kind of trust that they put in students um, in, the, in, in this college um, at ANU. So it's really unparalleled. Um, and you know, it's, it's the first in Australia. So um, that was the, the College of Engineering. And uh, next up, we'll be looking at um, where can an ANU Bachelor of Arts take you? So this will be with Professor Ray Francis. Um, and that'll be starting at 10.20. So thank you so much. Um, enjoy your day. We come from all across Australia and from all corners of the earth. We come because we are called to face the complex challenges of a changing world. We come seeking space to discover and to imagine a nation's future. to a global capital, to a hub of progress, to the heart of change. We come to meet each other and to meet tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. We come because we are called to define our futures at the meeting place. Are you thinking about moving away from home to come to ANU? I did. And today, I want to show you around so you can see why I love it so much. This is Cambry, the central hub of the uni, and it's a great place to grab a coffee on the way to a lecture. Now I want to show you the Ambush Gallery. They often put on exhibitions of student art here, and the exhibition opening nights are always a lot of fun. Now I'm going to show you along the residential halls of Daily Rose. Because I moved to Canberra from Queensland, I found it such a relief that ANU has an accommodation guarantee for all incoming first year students. Also, as you can see, there are so many great accommodation options to choose from. Hope you've enjoyed the tour today. Make sure you get online and apply now. Do you want me to show you what a typical day at ANU looks like? The best thing about ANU is the campus is everything you need. We've got a club line, which is an amazing gym. We've got the libraries and student central, which are great places if you need support. And most of all, we've got chart time. The class size is a really small here, which makes it so much easier to get one-to-one -one support. Well, there's a lights festival on tonight called Enlighten, so I reckon I'm going to head there. Uh, so I'll see you in a couple hours and I'll show you around. Hope you enjoyed the day. Thanks for joining. I will see you next week. I'm a student at ANU and I want to tell you why I moved to Melbourne to start uni and then moved back to go to ANU. Basically, I'm from Canberra, I grew up here and I decided to move to Melbourne when I was 19 to start uni because I just wanted to change and to experience big city life. But actually what I found was big city life was really overwhelming and really not a great environment for studying and ultimately I decided to move back. When I decided to move back, the application process was actually super easy. I just applied like you usually would and used my marks from my last year in Melbourne. There's so much to do here. Like everything that you want to do in a big city, you can do in Canberra, but everything here is just so much more accessible. I kind of wish that someone had just told me that earlier because Canberra's incredible and I kind of don't know why I left in the first place. Do the winters get easier? <laughs> Let's do it. I'm Jack, I study PPE, I'm from Rockhampton, Queensland. What surprised you the most when you moved to Canberra? 
I would say like maybe how convenient everything is. Got kind of like a big city vibe, but in like a small city kind of layout. So it's easy to kind of get around everywhere. What was the hardest part about leaving home? It wasn't anything like homesickness or anything like that for me. I don't know, I, I, I mean, I really liked it. Do the winters get easier? Well, I'll tell you what, they were a lot easier when I was in college and we had heating in the rooms. They probably get easier because you're more prepared for them. That's probably the, the positive, the positive outtake here. We come from all across Australia and from all corners of the earth. We come because we are called to face the complex challenges of a changing world. We come seeking space to discover and to imagine a nation's future. We come to a global capital, to a hub of progress, to the heart of change. We come to meet each other and to meet tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. We come because we are called to define our futures at the meeting place.